Now, what you're going to notice about Satan is that he's always con uh, connected to aquatic reptilian class. That's what you're going to notice about Satan. He's always connected with a, an aquatic reptilian class. What's really interesting is this. We won't turn there, but what, what you're going to find out that's interesting is in Revelation chapter 5, we see four cherubs around the throne. Now, Satan, we know he's the fifth cherub. He's also a cherub, right? So he's a missing cherub. What's really interesting, we're not going to turn there, but when we cover the four cherubs that surround the throne of God, so here's the throne of God, and then we got four cherubs surrounding it. If you look at the kind of creature, the class of creature they take after, there's a specific class that's missing there. The specific class that you'll notice that's missing is water or aquatic reptilian. It has to do with aquatic reptilian creatures. And is there, a, is there one specific person that can cover this class? Yes, it's perfect. It's Lucifer. The reason why is because he's known as Leviathan, dragon in the sea, water. And look at Revelation 12. It's proven that he's the dragon. Look at Revelation chapter 12. And we will read verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. And we see many verses in the Bible about the dragon in the sea, right? That old serpent called the devil. See that? And Satan. So that's Satan undoubtedly. Now, here's something very interesting right here, okay? He is known as the dragon, yes? Okay, he's known as the dragon. When you look up that word, the dragon, in an etymology where this word came from, you're going to find many interesting things. First of all, you're going to see that basically it's going to refer to something like this, a big, terrible lizard. But here's what's really interesting about this. You know what other word also connects with this one, terrible lizard, what they used to call? It's not just dragon. They also use this word too, dinosaur. Back then, when people would refer to terrible lizards, that's what you'll find out what dinosaur means, but then they also use another word. It was dragon as well. That's very interesting. But here's another note. You know what they also talked about when they referred to dragon back then? When they talked about dragon back then, especially during Christopher Columbus's days, that's why the sailors were telling Christopher Columbus not to go out to sea, because you're going to face what? The dragon that is in the sea. That's what the dragon was referring to. It's referring to a sea monster. That's really interesting right here. So there's no doubt Satan is connected with a lot of things that has to be aquatic reptilian. But here's another note why you know that this is really connected with Satan is that this word reptilian, we see that connected with a lot of things towards something right like this, right? Somewhere out there in outer space. But not only that, this thing concerning aquatic, you will see that term occasionally used by New Agers. So a lot of this, you'll notice, is connected to Satan, which is very interesting here. But here's the thing that you got to understand, is that Satan, he always wants to copycat God, right? Now, Satan, what did he do? You notice that there were pyramids in Egypt, yes? People always were wondering who built the pyramids in Egypt, because during the ancient days, what other group of people during ancient days had the strength and had the, the, the intelligence to build this up. There's only one group of people you can only think of during the ancient days who had the intelligence and the strength to move those huge amount of, uh, huge amount of bit, uh, stones to craft it into perfect dimensions. Genesis 5, the sons of God. They were down there during ancient civilization, sons of God, see. But here's what's extremely interesting as well. These pyramids, they were deliberately made to connect to the universe, outer space. And it, the dimensions and the points and the windows connected and aligned perfectly, and I mean like to a T, to certain parts of stars and constellations. 
that's not hard to believe about sons of God. It's so easy because who's the one? Right here, right? And they're all connected to that. So it's interesting how reptilians can be connected to the universe, you gotta understand. But here's also interesting. Did you read Revelation 12? This reptilian, right, dragon, a reptile creature, where is he at? He's over here in verse 4. And his tail drew what? The third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman. So notice right here, this reptilian was out in outer space. See, So that's not hard to believe. So this makes sense. But here's something that's also interesting right here is that these pyramids, they were made, it is said that a certain part of a symbol matched with the pyramid, which is why they were made. Now, Egyptians, they would always have this symbol, right? You notice? And throughout history, this Egyptian symbol turned into something Roman, which is the cross. So if you study history, that's where the Romans get their cross from, is from all the way back to Egypt, like this kind of symbol right here. But guess what? The pyramids, it is said to be like this. So basically crosses. Now this is where it becomes a blessing. A blessing? This is so evil, Pastor. No, this becomes a blessing now. Now look at the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. You know what Jesus Christ did, brethren? Look at John chapter 3. And you better thank God after this when you go home. <laughs> verse, four, uh, verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Here's this being that came from the universe, out of outer space, and he became that reptilian, so to speak. Because look at verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, what? Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Can you imagine what Jesus Christ did? Look at 2 Corinthians 5. This verse is like a highlighted verse you should know. 2 Corinthians 5. It touches your heart and melts your heart. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. You know what Jesus Christ did, man? With all of this evil and darkness, Jesus Christ took all of that upon himself so that we don't become a part of his child and his seed and his lineage anymore. You were once a child of this reptilian, a child of the devil. But Jesus Christ, he took that curse upon himself that's why the cross, see, all of that darkness, reptilian, evil, and sin was placed already on the cross, so you don't have to take that place, amen. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, and look verse 21. For he hath made him to be what? Sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made, whoo, the righteousness of God in him. Now, let's, let's close it with Galatians. Go to Galatians. Let's close it right here. And we'll call it a night. Look at the book of Galatians. Doesn't that touch your heart on how much God loved you, man? How much Jesus loved you? So, uh, what, so how can you live your life in sin? How can you not live your life living for Him? See, there's so much He did for you and I, and there's just so much to owe Him. There's just so much to owe Him. Look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 13. The Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Why did, how did he become a curse? Now remember, sin is a curse, right? But how did he become this? For it is written, what? It's the cross. Cursed is everyone that, what? Hangeth on a tree. So you got to realize this. That's why our churches, we don't put these symbols all over our church, see? A lot of Christian churches do that, but you got to think twice before doing that. This is not, this is a symbol of curse and sin and evil, you got to understand, ever since ancient Egypt. Jesus Christ put that evil upon himself, took that all upon himself for our sake, see? So that's why we don't put these cross things. That's why don't dangle a cross on your neck, see? Especially if it's a cross hanging on your neck, and the verse said, cursed is everyone that hangeth. On a tree? That one is like a big no-no. That's why we don't believe in that stuff. Now, also, we're not nit... Amen, that's right. So that's why we don't believe in that stuff, see? We hesitate to do that. 
Because Jesus became that curse and sin for us. He became what? That reptilian, so to speak, the serpent. Man, that's got to touch your heart, how much Jesus loved you and I. Man. Amen. He became Thank sin for Lord. us. Now, of course, we're not nitpicky people, so there's an extreme, all right? We're not very nitpicky people whenever, you know, there's like a, uh, you know, because in our red hymn books, you notice there's that little cross symbol. Now, if I had my way, we could fill that out. But here's the thing. We're not nitpicky people, too, okay? We're not just going to paint it all red, okay, and waste so much time on that, okay? We're not nitpicky people, too. Because sometimes you got to realize this, is that the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is what? The power of God. So you can use the cross in the sense of the power of God. See, So there's a, also a point where you shouldn't be nitpicky. You shouldn't be nitpicky. But, you know, you're not going to see a cross hanging on top of our church or on our wall. A lot of churches do that. And you got to realize this. That's the symbol that was erected by Satan. So you don't want to do something similar like that. You see that? 